on land and yeah. um, we haven't spoken much about Kane on this expedition but uh, you really can't have Kanaloa without Kane they, they come together as a pair and um, that uh, that sort of counter that ao and po the relationship between the light and the dark between the conscious and and the before and after consciousness it's it's part of what's moving us through space-time in such incredible ways on this expedition and um, so yeah it's and had me thinking about these other places that we're bringing in here like the Gulf of Mexico yeah. and, and how how these things are all connected and so I I think um, it, it is that Mo'olelo the, the story of, of these two brothers this pair um, that sort of had that on my mind I've been having some dreams that keep transporting me back and forth yeah. in, in some interesting ways between those different domains but uh, related um, domains so yeah it's uh, something I'm shifting through as we make our way back into Al you know and then near the end of this journey and trying to just as we had to prepare to enter yeah. also have to be prepared uh, to to enter back into Al and to leave pole behind so um, we have a few days to do that, thankfully. Yes. Nice long transit back, but. Transition, even once we get into port, a few days. I remember Uncle Archie telling me that it's like, what, after a voyage, coming back home, it's really settling in and then having to get back to the mundane uh, activities of everyday life. That's right. That's <laughs> Answering right. emails, driving yourself to work, to and from, running your errands, grocery shopping. Yeah. Uh, fighting for a parking stall at Costco. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just the, the little things that we don't have to think about or, you know, in, encounter while at sea. You know, so many people go on vacation and it's obvious to prepare to go. We talked about preparations. I remember Robert talking with us about, you know, making our lists and, and preparing to go to sea for a month, but we sometimes neglect. Um, you know, it's a bit different from a vacation, right? When you're out on these expeditions, these voyages of deep learning, you also have to prepare to come home. And, uh, but the time is not, you're still, you're still here on the expedition, and yeah. so you want to be fully present, and yet we also have to step into that space of, of making sure this? we're preparing. What's that? Oh, Can we get a zoom on this um, pink and yellow coral? Yeah. yeah, it looks like we might have uh, some more zoanthids there. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's gorgeous. All right, so we're pretty close to um, waypoint 4.5 today, midway between waypoints 4 and 5. <laughs> I was like, what? We don't have a 4.5. Yeah, we do I now. Get it now. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, it's literally in there. What? Yeah. yeah. Uh, not, not in the plan on high pack. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I was like, yeah. no, it's not. I'm looking at the plan. There's no 4.5. Uh, there's, there's a little bit uh, extra in the route because uh, we uh, we merged our Did mapping data with the existing. Are you uh, going to zoom in? Map. Yes. Okay. Uh, so Renny refined it a little bit. Okay. So um, once we hit waypoint five, we'll be turning the corner onto a flatter area. Oh, interesting. Is there like three hole pass on this? Yeah, it looks like the zoanthas are on just a single portion of this uh, Paragorgia. Um, those are some bright yellow zoanthids. Um, oh, wow, look at you're right, Kukui. There's it. Oh, I wonder if this coral fell, and that's why it's got like three um, hold baths. Yeah, because this coral is not this coral. I mean, it is. is not. Uh, it is? It looks, that I looks like bubblegum coral, and that does not their so much. Their may just be retracted. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, because I'm being fooled here by the, the polyps. polyps are out, and here the polyps are in. Gotcha. Um, but it looks like on the right, you know, it, it looks like the original hole fast might be on the right, this way, and then this might be a secondary hole fast. But I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but it, um, you know, because you don't usually see. It's like a banyan tree. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's actually got three hold fasts. That's yeah, pretty it wild. Does. I love some, it. Some of the coral that we've been seeing, the coral, it also reminds me of bonsai trees. Bonsai, yeah. absolutely. Like mm -hmm. the beautiful, intricate branching and the anemones or the um, mm -hmm. polyps that are like retracted. 
It just reminds me of a little bonsai canopy. I love that. Bonsai is such amazing trees, but also such an amazing practice of cultivating those trees. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it is Scott France who is I, uh, identifying the yellow, these yellow um, uh, polyps here, which are growing on top of the Perigorgia, are a Bologoma oh, Bologoma zoanthus. Um, which is, and it's pretty interesting that it is, um, you know, it is growing on on top of just this one, one portion. So. I could tell you a number of different things that I am not positive about, but yeah, it's pretty interesting. We have it's a uh, really interesting coral. Actually, I have a vote for a vote from the internet. So take it for what you'd like, whatever it's worth to you. But uh, saying Val is right, they're thinking that might be a, hem a hemicorallium uh, growing around yeah, the, branches, the Paragorgia. The, the, the branches look different. They're uh, yeah. skinnier yeah. on that little. Uh, Zoanthid encrusted. Yeah, uh, one thing branch. I'm noticing here though is that there is the it's red, a color. and um, also there's still the the um, bubbling here on these the, the branches that you can see that are easier to see. So um, yeah, this, look, it's still yeah. lighter colored branches here compared to mm -hmm. these. Yeah, like I'm not it, sure. What the, the, the morphology the is totally different. I like yeah. the debate. This is good. Can we have a quick zoom on the left hand side, please? Is I am at max. Yeah, this is okay. cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And earlier when Virginia just said, Kukui, you're right. I was thinking that could be a great subtitle for the 8 to 12 watch. Kukui, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> we, say, we say that a lot, our little light. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay. okay. Maybe that'll be the name of the podcast. Yeah. Oh Kukui, you're right. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Kukui, the light. <laughs> That's all you folks. Oh, <laughs> sense a good jingle coming on at the start of that podcast. I'll work on it for our 8 to 12 watch this evening. Atalanta, is that a is that a Tina four? What do we have there? Oh, shoot. just disappeared. Some kind of uh, jelly, maybe. Just missed it. Just disappeared. Is it the white floating thing? It was. It had, um, it had some like coloration on the interior of the. I think that's a retracted the main part of the body. Mm -hmm. Maybe. something in there. Yeah, Mahina, I've been thinking about if it's, um, you know, we, we shared so much protocol uh, entering into this space of Paul, um, honoring Kanaloa. And uh, I was wondering in my dreams last night, uh, I think, because I woke up wondering it, is, um, you know, do we make some sort of we make our presence and our return known, um, shared with with Kane. Um, is that a is that something that we're thinking of doing? Is it something that that seems appropriate or that we would typically do, um, traditionally do, yeah. uh, when we when we return that back across the tropic and and yeah. uh, and on our way home? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would I would believe so. I know that upon leaving the island of Koholawe, otherwise known as Kanaloa, and like that island is seen as a physical manifestation of our god Kanaloa. Um, there, we do an oli to ask to be released oh, from Kanaloa while we leave the island of Koholawe. Kukui. 
you do you, the oli for Koholave? Oh, I remember. Yeah. I, I remember it, the translation or like the Ike and the mana'o behind it is that to ask to be released from like the tentacles of Kanaloa as you go back, like walk back into your, your life in Owl. Yeah. Um, and so I think, yeah. Any other mana'o, Kukui? Um, yeah, no, that, that was, that was beautiful, yeah. Um, o Ave, I don't know the correct um, title of that song. Mm -hmm. um, I just call it O Ave Kuli. Mm -hmm. I don't know, do you guys have another name for it? Or, yeah. No, it's been a, it's been a few years, but. It's been a few years for me too. Um, but yeah, we usually do that when we go to Ko'olawe as well, mm -hmm. um, to um, Honokanaia site. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only side of Ko'olawe I've been to. But yeah, we would do that song as, or that oli, that chant as well. And um, it also has a line in it um, talking about the uh, ama crab. Mm -hmm. And so um, he'e, or the octopus, um, was known to eat uh, ama crabs. And so in that oli, you, you call upon um, the he'e and you talk about this ama, this, this bait for it. So it allows you it allows you to be released from its tentacles and to be able to transition back into um, your daily life. And um, sometimes we try to instill that in a lot of the other field courses that we've been doing. Um, at UH Hilo, we would do that chant because um, it's like usually those field courses, whether it's a classroom or whether you're on Ko'olawe, it's a rigorous couple of weeks or however long you're staying and transitioning back can be a little hard. And so that chant is kind of like a way to, like what Mahina said, to help us transition back into our normal routine in the realm of all. So mahalo nui Mahina for sharing. Yeah, of course both of you that's super helpful as we um, for me and probably for others as we consider you know how do we return and uh, what is this transition back into all going to mean for all of us as we return to loved ones return to our communities return to our hana to our work and our ohana um, how do we bring this place back with us in the right way and um, yeah De definitely, uh, we're still here. I want to remain fully present. Atlanta's getting a little low again. Feeling that, uh, feeling that transition coming though, coming soon. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, actually, I just found the oli too. And so its purpose was to request the departure from Koho Olave um, for all the participants to just prepare and get ready to depart. And the translation is um, speaks to for releasing me from my obligation as your guest. Mm. That's one of the last uh, lines in the oli. Yeah. But, um, I mean, yeah, I think it definitely just encaptures being a guest, entering these spaces, and then being able to humbly request to leave. Yeah. And I remember for a while after coming back home from um, Goho Olave, I just kept having a lot of dreams about it and thoughts about it. And then one of my friends who had previously been um, to the island had asked me about like the Oli and if I, I had chanted it, I guess, strong enough. <laughs> um, for lack of a better word, but and so then I just found myself like back at home on Oahu, having to continue it, uh, because as we've said before, Kanaloa and our deities have many different physical manifestations and kinolau or body forms. Um, Wait, that could be a. S can we get a zoom on this? Yes. And we see the he'e, the squid or octopus, as a form, a life form of kanaloa. That might be rock a pen? potential, yeah, that's a rock pen. Ooh. We, we might want to get a really nice zoom on that. Um, we might want a good spot to so yeah. well. Mahalo mahina. Yeah. Yeah, mahalo nui mahina. Oh, oh, oh yes, thank you so much. I was no problem. Yeah.
Oh, that was one of those waves that just makes the ship bounce a little bit. Those are always a little <laughs> when weird. When you catch it just right. Yeah. yeah. It comes back down, and the ship comes right back down on the crest of the wave and mm -hmm. gives us a little rattle. Swell picked up, yeah, Daniel? Yeah, a little bit. A little yeah. bit. It feels good to me. I say kind of is still being a little too nice to us. but uh, Yeah. it's yeah. We've had amazing weather. We've heard uh, I've, there's, there's some rumors, some ship rumors that... Uh, a, a nice south swell is on its way home mm -hmm. to Hawaii from the South Pacific. We might encounter some of that swell on our way back, and uh, that just gets me excited. Yeah. We got, got some fun and fun times ahead. Yeah, still some potential for catching some plates, plates in the galley. This cruise. <laughs> 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 oh. Are you ready for a zoom? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Are we gonna look real quick? We don't have a whole bunch of time. Oh, beautiful rock pen. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Look at the base, wow. Yeah, Strong. that's one of the reasons why these are so interesting is, um, you know, there's not many sea pens that will grow on top of a rock like this. Very different than the peduncles in the sand. Yeah. Right, yeah. much larger. And so it's, uh, there's not many, I think there's... Yeah, I'm gonna go. Oh, thank you for that amazing awesome. zoom, yep. though. Yeah, no. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this one has uh, so many more polyps than the uh, uh, the sea pens we were seeing yesterday. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yep. We're starting to see some sea cucumbers, too. This is the second one that I've seen in the last few minutes. And some of those lobsters, too. The little slippers. Yeah. The little blind yeah. ones. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. What a great common name. <laughs> Scott, Scott, <laughs> Scott Frank. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, yeah. not sure if that's not sure if that's the actual common name. Don't know. I like it. Toilet plunger sea pen. <laughs> no disrespect. Those toilet plungers are important tools. They are. Yes. Deserve deserve to have beautiful creatures named after them too. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, he says it's evocative of how it, how it attaches. Ah, yeah, absolutely. I was wondering if, it, if there was some sort of suction <laughs> or there was some, you know, what, what the adhesive mechanism was on, uh, okay. uh, but, but definitely not the common name. Not yeah, the, we've just, been reassured of that. Just yeah, Scott's like, creative naming. I don't think naming. it is the common name, folks, but yeah. <laughs> we appreciate yeah, you, common Scott. common name I is like rock pen, yes. Yeah, I have no idea how it attaches. It yeah. looks, yeah. Is that a tube anemone there? It is not glued, but suction. Yeah. I bet is that's that a what? tube anemone, I think. Oh, my! It I hope looks it's not like a maybe. Maybe. You just died. <laughs> <laughs> it's still in my head. Yeah, mine still too. It was head. finally out of my head. I hadn't even <laughs> thought about it at all this morning. I think it's starting to haunt my dreams. Oh my I'm just going to start singing Meet Virginia all the time. That oh one's my been God, in my head, too. Oh, my God, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Oh, <laughs> it just retracted. <gasps> oh, it oh. did. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye, buddy. Yeah. It was there, and okay. now it's not. Well, I spot on that one. Come out. I'm we'll bragging see. on Dan yeah. over here. <laughs> well, we can, we can get moving if you... I mean, yeah. Do you want to do a quick zoom since we're here? Uh, on Ooh, the tube? We can do a quick zoom. Yeah. Why not? Okay, are you ready for that, Zach? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> just, to clarify, just to clarify, toilet plunger sea pen is an uncommon name invented, yes. invented by our good friend and scientist, Scott France, to describe oh. the base of that rock pen. It has some uh, coral friends. Oh, cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Actually, I mean, I will say, the tube is actually interesting, too. It is. That is... That is it's, it's got that lip on it. That is it. very spherical. Yeah. Like that is that is a true. It's like that is. The inside looks like of that PVC, looks PVC pipe. Yeah. 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 PVC it looks pipe. much more think. like manufactured than I could have imagined. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And so we did. We could see in the larger view a little bit earlier that the the Syrianthid, uh, tube worm or tube anemone, not worm, definitely not a worm, um, tube anemone had been out and then it shrank back in. Oh, somebody's hanging out in a hole up yeah. there. 
So that's pretty cool. That's, that's pretty cool. And then we've got some uh, polyps or something underneath it. Mm. Interesting. Well, great. Thank you for that zoom. Yeah. Uh, Catalina, are we tracking a line up to waypoint five? Um, we're not tracking. We've actually I've moved it just to little hops. Okay. Um, since Perfect. it got a little steeper, but yeah. Okay. We're no, that's that great. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm very curious to see what we find at uh, waypoint five. Mm. So, um, so Scott France, just uh, just let us know because I am definitely not a tube anemone um, a specialist. Ooh, Ooh a halosaur. Oh, I love halosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Um, Oh, yes. Uh, so one of our um, scientists at sea, scientists ashore, we're the scientists at sea. At sea. <laughs> Are you sure um, about that? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's day 22, but, um, people. <laughs> they, they, these tube remedies have um, special organelles. Um, that are used to bind up mucus and mud grains to form that tube. OK. Yeah. In perfect circles. It's cylinders. That's amazing. Tychosis. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Mm, love it. So it looks like this large pillow here that we're just panning up to you can see it in cross-section. It looks like it broke oh. apart and spilled open, and I think all of this is might be melt that uh, flowed out of it. No way. Oh, so that it, it broke apart, you're saying, while when it was, was still cooling. very, like, while it was cooling, and the edges yeah, well, might have created like a crust, partially but solidified. the inside was very much still lava. Yeah. Yeah, it's or a, liquid. So it's a good example of that differential cooling, that cooling gradient that uh, Amazing. happens inside these uh, lava flows. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, I have a crazy question. Lava. It is a liquid? Yes. Okay. I mean, a yes, viscous but also liquid, like but, uh, a liquid. It's a highly viscous liquid? It can be, yeah. There's there's a viscosity range yeah. oh my uh, gosh. with lavas. Um, the, the, uh, the, the kinds that form places like here in Hawaii uh, tends to be a little, for the most part, a little runnier. But then you get into like uh -uh, where uh, it is it is more viscous. Um, but the higher the viscosity, the more dangerous the volcano can be. And uh, you get like these uh, really silica rich, highly viscous uh, melts that uh, can build up in uh, magma chambers at like say strato stratovolcanoes. And uh, uh, once those get ready to erupt, those tend to be explosive in part because just having a uh, uh, more viscous, you know, relatively rheologically strong magma means uh, it needs to build up a lot more pressure before it uh, fails and erupts. Can we get a zoom on this? Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, like, you know, a less viscous liquid, it can kind of just, like, bubble out. Yeah, which is uh, what we're seeing a lot of evidence for here. Just kind of just kind of oozes, runs till it runs out of steam. But that said, there are uh, like uh, phreatic uh, eruptions that can occur at, uh, uh, with some uh, basaltic volcanoes, and those are eruptions where uh, you're interacting with uh, where your melts interacting with water. And uh, uh, yeah, Kilauea has those occasional explosive phases too. Amazing, I think, actually. I think Mauna watching Loa them. has had one or two as well. Yeah. Yeah. Watching those flows come down into the ocean and uh, the lava hitting the ocean is always just Boom. so fascinating. Yeah, that's seeing those start to cool and then explode and fold out and cool and yeah, and you get out. those fragments that go flying into the air. <laughs> and it generates all sorts of uh, uh, vapors, yeah. you know, HCl and some other things that you, you don't really want to mess with. That is so. that when you get obsidian? Is when it cools really quickly or no, yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. yeah. So that's the, um, yeah, obsidian is yeah. Uh, volcanic glass, and uh, when I, when I talk about glassy rinds, that's the same sort of uh, thing there. But um, yeah, sometimes you get um, Instead of thin glass rinds, you, you do find uh, occasional uh, settings, both submarine and uh, terrestrial, oh, barnacles, yeah. um, where you do get uh, larger amounts of obsidian that form. That's cool. We yeah, actually found a... in the Lao Basin some lava flows that were like daysite glass. So nice. um, that's uh, 
a higher silica rock type. Um, it all erupted underwater and then just quenched pretty quickly. And yeah, that stuff really cuts up your hands. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, it's going to be really sharp. Yeah. So that's where. Uh, yeah, that's where the the leather gloves become super helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. So now this is really interesting. We've got several different organisms here. We've got the um, hemichorallium, which is the, the, the pink coral in the background with the very paired branching and d pretty distinct branching. We've got um, a type of squat lobster, several of the ophiroids. We have, we, we also have a, a barnacle on the right too, which is pretty interesting. Um, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. Looks like we and have oh, two different hydroids. sea star species. And a very crusty looking crab. You think we've, well, you th well, you do think we've got multiple species? Oh yeah, we might. Yeah. yeah. So this, that one's this got looks a lot of the this. different, um, yeah. Yeah, and that, that um, squat lobster is looking a little bit different than the yeah. ones that we typically see, like the Euro Caridota on them. Um, yeah, because it doesn't have that smooth carapace to it. Right, it's yeah, much, so uh, this one looks more spikier. Yeah, so Correct. we've seen some of the Eurocordot, cord, we've seen some of, the, we've seen different um, squat lobsters on some of the different corals that we see. Um, and this is, is not, um, it doesn't look the same as the ones that we've seen on, say, um, uh, the, the Chrysogorchus. And this is the, the Hemichorallium that we saw the forest of earlier in this expedition, same coral? Or similar coral when we were in that massive for coral oh, forest. Oh, um, uh, very similar. Yes, similar same one. family, definitely. Um, same. Mm -hmm. same, same, um, same genus, but uh, uh, it, the branching was different. Got it. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about viscosity uh, really quickly for those uh, who want to want to understand, clarify that term? If if something is highly viscous, that means it's m more liquid, more fluid. Or it um, means it's le or it's more dense. Yeah, it's the other way around. So it's other uh, way around. yeah, when uh, you have a highly viscous liquid, um, it's it's much harder to form to deform. It's uh, it. uh, much thicker feeling. Yeah. So um, be like uh, comparing, say, uh, water versus uh, maple syrup. Yeah. We're gonna go to the food analogies. Viscosity is higher for the maple syrup. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Got Some it. of the uh, highest viscosity liquids out there are actually. Uh, uh, like tars. Yeah. So um, uh, there's there's a famous experiment called the pitch drop experiment, which has been running for decades now, trying to estimate uh, the viscosity of pitch. And um, because it, don't, it it it's a very rare occurrence when that uh, uh, that pitch actually drips. So what happened was a scientist puts it put some uh, pitch in a funnel and just let it sit. That's and there's, and there's an opening in the bottom, and it, it forms these <laughs> droplets. And uh, it's it's hilarious because the uh, last time it dropped was a couple of years ago or so, and it's notorious. Like the experiment is notorious because once it once uh, it looks like it's ready to drop, it like there's kind of this 24 or seven watch on it, and it always <laughs> seems to drop uh, whenever somebody's in the bathroom or stepped away whenever or something. No one's it's looking. Like yeah, I'm I don't know if it's actually now. been observed yet. Like, <laughs> no way. This. That's it's, hilarious. It's, oh, is it's it being hilarious. recorded? Yeah. Like videoed. It might I'm be I'm sure now. in like yeah. super, super like high mm. frame rate. They probably wanted every, every aspect of that, uh, of that drip. Measuring viscosity of pitch, that's awesome. I mean, I think, that, so can, can non-liquids also, do they also rate on the viscosity scale? So can you say like something that's... Sure. Yeah. Okay. So that's like the mantle yeah, is, which is, is not a liquid. Convecting, uh, uh, convecting solid. It's a convecting solid, but and also has a viscosity. Of, yeah, you can you can think SPL. of it in terms of uh, <clears throat> viscosity. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. I think glass can actually flow. I think you're. Oh, I think I've heard centuries. that too. Yeah. I think some other people have disputed that, though, in recent years. But really? Yet, I mean, glass technically can behave like a liquid because it's a disordered structure. <clears throat> Wait, what is this that you're talking about before pitch? What is that? Did uh, it's it's called the tar. Uh, tar. The pitch drop experiment. Yeah, it's like tar bit okay. bitumen. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't want to drip. And that's how I love it that there's scientists just waiting for it, just studying in that drip. <laughs> yeah. A single drip. Yeah, this April, is science, kids. All right, so the hot pitch was poured in 1927. <laughs> uh, the stem was cut in 1930 once flow was established. <clears throat> 
and nine drops have fallen since, with the what? last one being in April 2014. Oh, it's wow. coming, everybody. Just give it another 10, 20 wow. years. Be, be on the lookout. So there the have next been uh, three that have dropped in my lifetime. Wow. <laughs> we, need, we need to try and get ahead of the game here. We keep being, yeah. like, dragging really the, the slope pace? here. Yeah, that means you get out in front instead of behind. Yeah, these steep cliff faces aren't helping with that. Let me just hold that a little bit for a second. Oh, over over in Ireland and Scotland, doing a lot of a lot of this good drip research, pitch pitch drip research. Yeah, I love it. Trinity College, Dublin, great great place to visit. Yeah, it looks like there are several of these experiments uh, running at some different institutions. <laughs> One viewer saying the pit strip, the pit strip experiment would be the best mindfulness live stream, <laughs> or the best cure for insomnia. Yeah, that's right. All right, I'm going to be on the lookout for the next drop, the tenth yeah. drop. Huh? Yeah, looking at the. Uh, <clears throat> At the time intervals between these drops, it was somewhere between a uh, little over seven years to a uh, little over nine years between most of these drops. But uh, the last two are, uh, uh, they, they've taken a lot longer. Don't know why. Now, are they keeping this like temperature controlled? And I think so. I, I don't know for sure, though. It does look like it. Attempt at putting it in a vacuum and, uh, at least and it, temperature yeah, it controlling it. Covered by a by a bell jar. Yeah. Science is funny. Ooh, Ooh a house oh, or oh, in a oh. potato oh. head. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah maybe have passes with this. So fitted. I'm just taking like a million pictures on the still cam now, so it's uh, it's pretty amazing. We've been seeing a lot of uh, I, what I think are um, Rhodonoridogorgias. We've seen a couple of um, Eridogorgias as well as these, um, uh, you know, the these different sponges um, and fans. Um, yeah, we got some nice, <coughs> really nice rocks here. We're almost at a point where I'd be ready to take a collection again because we've gone up a couple hundred meters. Mm. So, but we can't really sit down here. Yeah, you say that because of the angul the, yes. the angularity. Yeah, it looks good here. It looks like it's broken off of something instead of. Uh, yeah, and I can very clearly see. Uh, oh, look at that radial. Fragments. Yeah. Yeah. That was a nice geometry there. Okay, so for the pitch drop experiment, um, no specially <laughs> controlled atmospheric conditions, which uh, will have an effect on the uh, viscosity. So it wouldn't have been constant because oh. uh, that, that changes uh, uh, with temperature. Yeah. Uh, sometime after the seventh drop fell in 1988, air conditioning was added to the location where the experiment takes place. And that lower average temperature has lengthened uh, uh, the time between drops. So that mm -hmm. explains that change. It's amazing, like how many generations of scientists have uh, have have come and gone while this experiment has been going on. Hey, some projects uh, are generational. I'm part of one of those too. That's right. Oh, that's okay. awesome. Just, it, mine, mine doesn't involve pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But yeah, I, I love it when science can get like passed down uh, all these different generations and just generate new stories and stories on top of, uh, uh, you know, the. Uh, uh, the objectives mm -hmm. of that work. Yeah. So when they count it as a drop, is it when it, because like it could flow and just stretch? It's got to break. It's got to yeah, break. Yeah, it has to break. Now, do they leave space for it to do the like noodle thing? Yeah, <laughs> they do. <laughs> so it's 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 uh, it's stored in a funnel um, uh, type wild. setup, and it was melted into that uh, in order to uh, establish flow. And uh, once it was cool, that was uh, that was when the, uh, uh, the the experiment basically formally started. And yeah, that uh, it's sitting up high enough um, above uh, off off the uh, off of its pedestal that you can uh, get a beaker under there and catch the oh, drops as the they fall. Oh, there's the chunk drops. 
Oh, sorry, oh, we gotta stop for Chana Cops. Oh, little Chana Cops. It's possible. Are we in a spot where we can Aww. just do a quick zoom? Yeah. Or? Sorry. For little Chana Cops. Good eye, Kukui. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. The angle of the still cam is slightly different, so I. Look at all the Aruda Gorges around here, too. It's amazing. They picked a great spot. The amazing Rodana Aruda Gorges and Aruda Gorges here. I am. Um, Blown away, yeah. Oh, you can really see the difference between Aridogorgia and Rodana Aridogorgia in this because they're right next to each other. You can see, I think, if I'm looking at the right so thing. The waves are picking up a lot. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, this is the most we've worked in a long rolling. time. Let's go. Oh, amazing. <laughs> time to get in the water. I, I am also a fan of uh, uh, where this Chana Cops decided to go hang out because these are all some really nice rings. <laughs> <laughs> but again, but we're too close still to moving. Yeah, yeah, too close to uh, uh, try any sampling here. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, too yeah. much to disturb. I think I'm way in front of you though. I'll be okay for a minute. We do not want to scare the Chana Cops. Aww. Aww. It's a little so one. Cute. Cute. Uh, the color Just a little nice. friend. Yeah. Oh, it's like 10 centimeters. <laughs> Looks like a red potato. But it's lost its uh, darker coloration, so it's not too right. young. Aww. Yeah, I thought that was so interesting to find out earlier this trip was that the, the black uh, chonicops that you'll see are actually juveniles. Yeah. Yeah, that was an interesting thing to... You can see how they use that. Is that their caudal or their pectoral fin that they kind of use as a little bit of a footing? Uh, it's like almost their anal fin. Their anal yeah. fin, yeah, it's like a little set of feet. Yeah, they're <laughs> it's a power stance. Hanging on to the power yeah. stance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yes, get it, little Johnny Cobb. Good firm footing on those rocks. <laughs> you pass your public speaking training. Yeah, <laughs> power stance. Let's see if I got any. I think it's also using its little pectoral fin too. Yeah, up on the it's rock in front. Up. It's cute. Yeah. What a funny little amazing creature. Mm -hmm. You are loved, little Chana Cops. <laughs> Internet loves you. We love you. The elementary classrooms. <laughs> yeah. Love the Chana Cops. Oh. It's a small little angler, that little lure, that chemical lure looks more pronounced on this little one than I've seen on a lot of a lot of the other Chana Cops. Maybe just the angle or the... Oh, oh, oh get him. Whoa. Maybe that's because he's hungry. <gasps> he's wow, hungry. that was cool. Whoa, that yeah. was big old Chana Cop sight. Hey, I don't know. It might have been I a little threat display. I was not <laughs> expecting that. Display. Is that how they get the water out whenever they're eating, I guess? I guess. That's so yeah. cool. Wow. Nice job, little buddy. I did Someone not. Someone catch a shrimp there earlier this year. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow. That's wow. amazing. Fantastic. All right. <gasps> Ooh, oh, again? Oh. Wow. <laughs> go through his whole body. Wow. Her whole body. It's whole body. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Robin. Good job. <laughs> we appreciate that that effort. <laughs> oh. Wow. And again? Do you Why have not? any idea, like idea what all the little like <gasps> circular oh. spots are? Like below around its eye? I know, it's so beautiful, it's that like pattern. Scales or something? Huh. No idea. Interesting. Oh, Not a Just translucent. I wonder what's on the inside there, why it, why those scales would show up like that, or internal structures mm. show up like that. It could one. be its version of its lateral line, but there's like two rows I think we're going to have to get going here pretty so. quick. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We've had a good time with this Chana Cops. Yeah, Mahalo Chana Cops. Mahalo Nui. Yeah. How bright its little lure is. It's amazing. Good uh, job. Shining bright. Mm -hmm. Our little 
But it's not the typical or where it's hanging over? It was just, you said, a chemical one? I don't think so. I was trying to learn more about it. I definitely don't know much, but uh, some sort of chemical attractant, and it's just kind of a node on its forehead. And things get close, and it kind of almost vacuums them in like we sort of saw there. Yeah, that was interesting to learn that not all anglerfish have um, bioluminescent antlers, um, anglers, but yeah. um, also, as you were saying, the chemosensory angler, or the, you know, they are able to produce um, instead of light, maybe a maybe a s something like a smell. Yeah, amazing. That attracts um, different organisms, prey. This is this, this is, is an cool. astounding abundance of. Corals of Rod and the specific, I believe that these are Rodana ritogorgias. Awesome. Where we are now, Val, in the in the Hawaiian island chain, is this almost definitely associated with Hawaiian hotspot, or is this still close to the intersection of uh, of the uh, potential c crossing? mantle plumes. Mm, I think we're still kind of in that intersectional area, so I have Great. no idea. Cool. I love it. Love mysteries. Yeah. That means so Amber, back on the uh, uh, pitch experiment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so it, it, look, it looks like, yeah, it looks like nobody's really actually seen a legit drop. Like in oh 2000, uh, there was a webcam monitor, but technical problems no. uh, kept it from oh being recorded. <laughs> um, we need to start one on the Nautilus. And the ninth drop uh, in 2014 was still attached to the funnel, but um, one of the professors in charge of the experiment decided to replace the beaker that was catching uh, all the <laughs> drops before then, and uh, before the ninth drop like fused to them. Um, and while the bell jar was being lifted, the base wobbled, and the drop snapped. Ah, oh. hmm. so close. Amazing. Yeah. Wow, that <laughs> should be so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I guess maybe we get a chance in like 2026 thereabouts. 2027. <laughs> I love it. Maybe maybe someone will actually see it that time. Uh, keep an eye on it. Yeah. I think we should start one maybe with the lentils at dinner. <laughs> the lentils. <laughs> We just measure the, the viscosity. Of, oh, I love the lentils, but we can spare a little part of the batch for uh, for a viscosity. Yeah, for science. It's for science. I'll rig something up. How are we doing on tether? Do we have time to get some good zooms on like this bamboo and the Ritogorgia next to it? Uh, yeah, you do it quick. <laughs> if not, that's okay. It looks like we're, we're in a spot where we can get more. We're kind of clipping later. along, but yeah. yeah well, yeah. the ship stops, so. Is it? Uh, the ship is right now, yeah. Oh, okay. 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 We can look done. Wow, look at that. It's our depth. Our depth is 1785. 1785. Yeah. Um, this might be you a good place to look rock? for another rock if yeah. uh, the ship's okay with holding. Okay. Ooh, oh, a little bitty little fish. eel. We'll just Ooh. have to find the right spot. Potentially. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there's a river. Okay. Yeah, it does it's look a baby like a little snap a little baby poohy. You know, I was about to ask if this is a good place for a niskin, and we do not have niskins. We do not have niskins. <laughs> yeah. But yes, it yes. is a good place for But it would be. You are absolutely correct. <laughs> I agree. Man, sometimes I have the hardest time finding any nodes on these bamboos. Uh, there was one down there. You saw it? Yeah. Oh. See, yeah. Oh, good spot, though. That was kind of covered yeah, up. Yeah, the so bottom the, right. Right, yeah. Right, right where right the branch is, yeah. Where the, um, so, yeah, oh, yeah, so the branching is coming uh -huh. from just above the node there, and it looks like there might be another node here. So is it intranodal? I believe so. If it's, I mean, it's, like, it's so close. It's so interesting. Um, that's awesome. A sparse branching, um... Beautiful zoom. Atalanta has something really. Yes. That was a beautiful. Uh, what was that? A siphonophore or something? Hmm. 
So yeah, um, uh, Scott just mentioned that it is the uh, genus Keratoiasis. Um, looks like I've missed a couple earlier messages, but um, uh, yeah, that's great. Oh, and it looks like, um, yes, yeah, so this is an uh, internodal uh, sparse branching keratoiasis. So that's really interesting. So um, it looks like we're able to see the polyps in this. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, there are a, there are a, a lot of polyps um, of branches on this one. Could we zoom out just a touch on this one to get an idea of the size um, and the number of branches? Yeah, that's great. Okay, it's always Ready? amazing work by our front row. Um, Incredible, did Amber. You, Virginia, did you Fantastic. need a minute? Yeah, could we zoom on this one as well? Okay. There's something behind it. Shrimp. Mushroom yeah. coral. Yeah. I think I think you're right. Oh, there's a shrimp and some. Oh, it's a baby mama shrimp. Oh. I, I, I should just say saw baby mama, but a mama <laughs> shrimp. <laughs> I think I also <laughs> saw Sorry. that thing on the rock. Mm. What's up with the mushroom back there? Is that what it is? Yeah, I think yeah, that's a green a thing. Coral. Oh. Yeah. That's awesome. Would it be possible to also zoom on the um, the coral that was just to the right of this one? Um, or above it? Oh, above it. I'm sorry. Yeah, this one? Yeah. Uh, that's the one that I... Is this the Ritagorgia Splendens you were talking about, Asako? Yep. You got a couple seconds yeah, more to hold on. I think that's yeah. the one that they're talking about. Yep. You did a rope. <clears throat> Is maybe a Ritagorgia. I do see that the branch that the polyps are coming from one side of the branch. Okay, that, that's it. Okay, that's, that's all I got. Yeah, yeah, that's all I got. We're we're at the end of the rope. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. Appreciate you, front row. Best best there is. So I see MIT says contrary to urban legend, the glass is a slow moving moving fluid. Uh, it's actually a highly resilient elastic solid. Hmm. Nice. Which means that it's completely stable. Interesting. Elastic isn't a descriptor I would have thought of for glass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So I have I have been corrected. These are um, these are still Aridogorgia, um, and I think you're right. They are the the splendens. Thank you, Sako. Sako. I know that one of the things I've observed in uh, glass making is that uh, incredible kind of flexibility and elasticity of glass. But once it cools, it doesn't strike me as very elastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the glass doesn't make good uh, viewports for submersibles. They actually use acrylic plastic. Oh, is that right? Um, is there is there a place we we might be able to find that's uh, free enough to uh, grab a sample, a rock sample? Maybe if we scoot a little further up, so there's not sure. so much. Yeah, we're oh. still stretched yeah, out. Yeah, there. Ah, okay, yeah, sorry. I'm coming, yeah, I'm coming. Towards yeah, them. let's uh, let's take care of that first. I can't turn around yet. These so. beautiful rock fields keep showing up just at the uh, just they, at the wrong time they today. They have a knack for that. <laughs> <laughs> Being tricky. Oh wow, you can see some of the original eruptive striations on some of these uh, pillow blocks here. Maybe like up over there or something? Maybe. Mm. We'll get in front of the yeah. line or two. Oh, this hey. could be a good area in here. We can sit down not on a coral. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, good morning, Chris. Happy to see you. Is that just one of those biofilms that we see periodically? Well, I think that my I was assuming that was a dead sponge. Oh, could be that too. Yeah. Oh yeah, that one looks the same. I think it's a sponge. Another sea spider too. 
All these too big, Val? What was that? Is that all these, these too big? Too big. Are these rocks too big for you? Um, looking at the lasers, yeah, some of these are on the large side. Okay. <clears throat> Most of them seem to be. Scooch us forward a little bit. Okay, that size oh, fraction there is getting better. That's another. That was weird. We are uh, basically right on top of waypoint five. And uh, almost. Yeah, this is pretty impressive. It is. Beautiful coral. I've just been sitting on the still cam. You'll have a million to go through, Dan. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the still cam image. Up in this area. Quite beautiful. Yeah, looks like it might be clear enough. How about right here to the left, right above that mushroom? Yeah, yeah, right up in this yeah, area. Yeah, all right there, yeah. Okay. Ooh, ooh, which one do I pick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get settled before I do anything. Yeah, no worries. I'm, I'm just like, oh no, too many options. Decision paralysis. <laughs> what is that? That's floating up in the water over by the Prince of Georgia. Oh yeah. Yeah. What is that? You'll see oh. that purple. Oh, oh yes. Blob. Oh, purple blob. Oh, cucumber. Mm. Coming right at us. I don't know. It's yeah. not. Can I zoom in on that? Chana cups, yeah. baby chana cups. Yeah, go ahead while I get set up. Okay. It's kind of just a oh, jelly blob. Yeah. What? Oh. Is that a sea avocado? A <laughs> sea avocado. Oh, I love it. it. Is. Whoa. I love it. Maybe oh, it's a pyrosome. Pyrosome. What's that? the bottom of it look like? What? Y'all, I have like no idea what we're looking at here. It's a UFO. I like I like sea avocado. Sea avocado. Oh, oh, wait, it's got a hole in the bottom of it. <laughs> oh. Is it a tunicate? I, want, uh, that's well, what, um, I think I found my favorite sea creature. Uh, <laughs> sea avocado. Oh, that is wow. something. Oh my god. What? It's floating around. Wow. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Um, is yeah. this something that you want to. Oh, never mind. They're talking about something else in the chat. <laughs> wait, it's like. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow. So long, friend. Bye bye. <laughs> that Thank is a you weird. Good I mean, spot. It, it could be a. It's the wrong shape for uh, a pirate. Chris though. wants to collect that floating thing. Oh. Oh, yeah, he wants the floaty thing. Okay. Uh, that was what you were talking about. Um, Sorry, Chris. Um, uh, um, I don't know. Can we? He's moving pretty fast. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's moving. It's fast. moving quickly, and it's also the only one we've seen. Uh, ole. Crap. Oh well. Colomo. We may Con see. Yeah. Conalo says no. Yeah. yeah. You may see another one. Okay. Anyways, um, <laughs> rocks. Yes. <laughs> not not uh, see avocados. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got here. Let's see, lasers. So that's a beautifully angular rock right there. Um, ooh, ooh, all of the rocks. Um. <laughs> That's that's a good one. A little on the smallish Sorry, size. What is zooming? Um, okay. That one. Is that one? So you do they do look? Yeah, that one's a little bit small. Do you want to do this one right here? Right where the, uh, right that one. Went? That might be out of reach, but. Um, okay. Oh, so this one here is is pretty nice. Sorry, there's everything. That's <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, I think I really like this one up in the upper left. A little rectangular if one? If that is what I think what it is. Okay. Chris and Asako are saying that uh, this this is a completely unknown animal. We've only seen maybe a couple of other times before, which oh given, our, given our permit restrictions would technically allow us to sample that. Um, if it's something totally new to science, oh. but um, but even so, we defer to Kanaloa. 
what the ocean offers as a gift to us to sample and um, we'll see if it comes back and it's meant to be. Yeah, that thing was moving at a pretty good clip. It's a great illustration of uh, yeah, that might be out of our reach, is it? Yeah, it is. All right, let's let's uh, let's look for another one. Um, let's see. It's a good angle, but I'm worried that one's flat. Uh, um, 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 thinking. <laughs> let's see. What about that? That looks like it might be wedge shaped. Okay. Again, a little bit on the smaller side. But not too bad. Can you zoom in a little bit? Yeah, just, be just below the laser lights. Yeah, I kind of need to look at its other side, too, to be sure. Sorry, grab. Oh my gosh. Sorry, buddy. Oh yeah, that's that's a nice wedge-shaped rock. Okay. Um, going, what boxes? Um, we have boxes B, C, D, and F open. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> <laughs> Moments ago, before sampling the rock, we saw something that we could not identify, likely new to science. Um, Ready? Difficult to sample. Yep, go for it. And powerful illustration of the intention that we bring to our sampling, especially here in Papahanaumokuakea. Taking what the ocean gives us, mm -hmm. not just whatever we want. We definitely have to carry out this reach search intentionally and, and try to leave as little impact on these uh, sacred spaces and vahipana and protected spaces. So, mahalo, thank you. How special as well to uh, see a mystery remain a mystery. Yeah, yeah there's beauty to that. Absolutely. I know it frustrates the heck out of scientists, and I'm, oh, I apologize well, for that. I apologize for yeah. that. Oh, no, like, no uh, apology <laughs> needed. No, no, not at all. Some things are just meant to be left. Yeah. If Kanaloa says no, Kanaloa says no. When it's time, then they will reveal itself, and research yeah. can be done. But up until that point, I think we'll know. It's a na'au feeling. It's a gut feeling. It's intuition, whatever you want to call it. But... Yeah. We were not in the position, therefore it was not right. Right. How yeah. joyful and hilarious will it be if it just lands on our porch now and says, hey, yeah. I thought you were going to take me. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> the irony. You know, it also is another example of how many, of how unexplored the deep sea really is. There are so many organisms just, I mean, not just like that one, but that are, that we don't know about, you know. Ooh, nice. Oh, beautiful. Nice. <laughs> 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 Two points. Nice work, team. <laughs> Front row team doing it again. And yeah, that one was moving fast enough that we weren't we weren't going to be ready to try to chase anything around with a suction sampler. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it was it was gorgeous though. 
our oceans have been exploited for years. And so I think for us to be able to shift that, to shift that perspective and paradigm is, that's our kuleana. Stop doing that. <laughs> Yeesh. <laughs> turning that down, you're turning it down. Hey, Nav, confirming that was samples 105. Got it, thank you. Sweet, thank you. Yeah, as, as uh, Virginia is saying in the science chat, um, we did get some really good uh, uh, angles on this uh, for imagery. So we we saw one side and then we saw it flip over and we saw that opening on the other side. It gives us a little bit of information to work off of, but um, yeah, as, as, as nice as it would be to actually understand more about, uh, more about whatever this animal is, we you know we, we get to learn a lot by uh, just looking at it, watching how it moves. There was uh, some good questions coming in during that, asking, could would this show up in an eDNA sample, um, for example? Well, we won't know because our Niskin bottles aren't working, but mm -hmm. uh, it wouldn't have mattered anyways without the genetic primer. Um, right. Without knowing what DNA to look for, we wouldn't have been able to identify uh, the particular DNA of that organism. So while it's a clever thought, um, that particular method wouldn't have solved the problem in this instance. Right. Unfortunately for this, it looks like we have we have no concept of what it is. And so with corals, you can actually um, there are specific portions of a genome of the gene that you can target that will tell you key information about it. Um, but we don't even know what um, uh, how to start developing <laughs> right. a, a right. primer for that um, you yeah. know particular organism. So you don't even know the yeah. phylum. No. <laughs> We think we might know the kingdom. It should be an animal, but we're... <laughs> Theoretically, yes. <laughs> but, right. uh, Thanks for the great sample, front row. Uh, yeah, mahalo. No problem. And I'll, I apologize about the, the bio sample. I looked at it, and oh, I was no. like, oh, oh, there it goes. No, no, it, it, no, it, it was caught, moving fast. It caught us by surprise. Yeah, that, are, that was not you at all. You did exactly as you should do. Yes. Okay, and that was sample 105. Yeah, 105. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, it was radiant. Okay. You know? I yeah. like it. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that That's one. a lot. Okay. okay we're about 16% oxygen saturation. Oh, That's been trending down over the course of this dive, but yeah, we're seeing pretty abundant uh, communities yeah. here. Well, yeah, I mean, we're at oh. 1,700 meters, so <laughs> yeah. that makes Yeah, the current's yeah. moving pretty yeah. decently. That's all he was flying by. Yeah. <laughs> Just on top of waypoint five here, just a little bit above it stratigraphically. So we are making some good time toward this mystery. Is it a caldera? <laughs> is it a thing? <laughs> what is it? What is this weird summit structure? Hot tub. Hot tub. Hot tub. Hot tub. Um, no, we're gonna be yeah. actually, Maybe down yeah, here, tepid tub. Tepid tub. So yeah, we're question. actually moving yeah. up this way. Okay. Yeah. I say it every watch, but I'll say it again. I absolutely love being in here with all of you. This, all of you in this control van, you are inspirations. You say it several times a watch. How oh, good! <laughs> I want you to know, Robert. I want you to forget. I know how. I know how you are sometimes. Just forget. How, forget how much I love you. <laughs> it's just an incredible, incredible privilege. I'm love watching you all do do the work. <laughs> I don't know. You better listen to him. This is the, we're talking to about the man who uh, uh, sampled uh, lava erupting underwater. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so that thing was a new species of something, right? What was it exactly? Was it just some kind of jelly? Oh, we have, we no, have idea. no idea. Exactly. Exactly. It's a total mystery. Yeah, you're also not on SPL. Oh no, I'm on SPL. I don't know if what oh, you were just a little soft. Yeah, maybe it's your mic. Anyways, sorry. I was saying, was that just like some kind of jelly or something? It's that unknown. was a completely unknown. Um, we have no clue. Apparently, they've looked. Um, someone. Let me let me double check. I'm on the Literally in science chat, they said mollusk. Can. Yeah, uh, sea cucumber, tuna kit, <laughs> it could be yeah. grizzly bear, we have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to listen to y'all, but it's just yeah. like, uh, do something. Yeah, so by the way, that, that's, that's going between like, you know, your bivalves, 
your um, your cordot your cordata right like your heavy cordata that like tunicate so like this is like a huge group um, those those are different phylums that they can be in so it's yeah, they're okay. different um, no uh, di large different uh, like groups of organisms that they could be yeah. it's a big branch of the evolutionary tree huge that we're branch. looking at yeah. right? <laughs> trying to figure out what that is. Sorry, my, my brain is deciding to like <laughs> completely forget um, taxonomic order at the moment. So yeah, I'm actually so. looking it up right now because I have not had to deal with that in many years and I don't remember uh, all the exact. Uh, it's got to be at least in the oh, class. Yeah, no. But no, it is phyla. Yeah, yeah, it should be phyla. All of a sudden I was like, oh my God, no. It's, uh. Okay. The broadest, it's domain, then kingdom, then yeah. phylum class, yeah. order, family, genus, and species. Yeah, nice. I don't know why I'm my not brain remember that. decided to forget that, but yeah. It's, there's there's too many of them. <laughs> it's funny when your uh, biology education stops at like, uh, you know, introductory levels, then uh, you remember that. But when you've done such deep knowledge and deep dives into, uh, into mm -hmm. biology and ecology, that becomes kind of way in the background knowledge. I know, That's I'm over funny. here like trying to differentiate between two species of things and I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, Where I'm always, are we? I'm always, at this point in my, in my career, I'm, I'm regularly having to remind myself of how to do uh, oxide to mole conversions for uh, <laughs> elements. And, uh, you know, I used to be able to do that uh, 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 just off the top of my head. But some things you, do, you end up losing randomly and it's the most frustrating thing. There's and it's usually the simple stuff. Okay. Yeah, There's yeah. I think this so was much. more of like a brain fart situation because I was <laughs> yeah. just like, all this, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, oxide to mole back is pretty easy to do. So I don't know. I don't know why it's gone out of my head. Okay. I can still tie my shoes at least. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's important. Ooh. What is that? That looks like a interestingly sparsely branched bamboo over there. Yeah. On another rhodogorgia. We have moved away from the like massive abundance of those Aridogorgia splendens, though. Yeah, changing so quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we're doing on tether, etc. But would it be possible to get a zoom on? Well, we're actually way out in front, so, yeah. it's, so it's a I'll good spot to be. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. <laughs> Is it good to be a little bit closer? The current's kind of funky. Hmm. Get this on the still cam. So on the viscosity of the glass thing, somebody <laughs> says that it will flow over time. It says a one meter sheet of glass will increase its uh, thickness by 10 angstroms over 10 billion years. 10 angstroms. Wow. <laughs> oh, slow down, glass, slow down. Oh, Breaking God. all sorts so of speed limits there. Uh, well, Doing the pitch your... test with a sheet of glass might yeah. take a while. <laughs> yeah. Let's give a reference point to our viewers. What's what's something that's ten angstroms? It's what's like one geez? one atom thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. basically one so, atomic. Yeah. Robert, remind me why did you say that you couldn't use a glass for submersibles? It would just oh, because it it, it doesn't. Breaks. It, yeah, because it's rigid and it it fails catastrophically. Ah. So they use acrylic plastic for the viewports. It's more elastic, more flexible. Yeah. yeah, so it actually seals better at depth unless you apply heat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. And then it extrudes. Uh oh. Like the lava. Like the lava. <laughs> and you, know, oh, you no. don't really want your viewports to extrude. <laughs> no, you really no don't. No extruding viewports. Oh, God, please. that's nightmare fuel. <laughs> oh, oh. I love how Robert can just laugh about that. Yeah. <laughs> when you've been when you've been down in those viewports so many times. And been, collecting uh, lava with. Yeah. And collecting lava. <laughs> oh my God! No. Right. There's so heat just there. to be clear, <laughs> we're not taking a submersible into the erupting volcano. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, but it, that's when you send an ROV though. Yeah. Proximity to. Yeah. We don't do wrecks and we don't do volcanoes with <laughs> submarines. That sounds smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although, didn't Alvin see Titanic? Wasn't it Alvin that found well, Titanic? Well, that was back in the day. Okay. <laughs> Did you do yeah. that? I uh, know. That was before my time. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Are we wanting to do a zoom on this? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Where you want it exactly for changing? Yeah, so this area right here would be great. Okay. It looks like, actually, this one looks like that sparsely, um, 
uh, internodal just behind the node branching yeah, that, you see um, that they clearly. were talking about before. But the number of branches is very different. So this one is sparse, whereas the other one might have been bushy. Um, I think, yeah, I think it was Scott France who was talking about that earlier. Interesting. That's fantastic. Yeah. Bamboo polyps are just so pretty. They are. Beautiful. There it is. Wow. wow. That's just awesome. Thank you mm -hmm. for that, Sam. Robert, what kind of container did you use to collect uh, the lava from the ROV? What's that can. scoop look like? A coffee can? <laughs> 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 nice. He's not joking either. No, nope, it was a coffee can. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hey, when you run into a unique situation <laughs> like that, you got to get creative fast. And oh it's always it coffee cool cans. pretty much immediately, so it didn't melt the coffee can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, That's incredible. Yeah, coffee you got to get can. right in there. Or it's uh, solidifies, and you can't get it. Yeah. What do you have to worry about on the ve on the vehicle? What were some of the things that uh, might might go down exposed to that kind of heat? Anything? Uh, no, because like it cools off like you know inches away. Within inches, yeah, yeah just like yeah. the hydrothermal yeah. vents. So. Yep. But yeah, it, it uh, the water conducts away that heat so fast. Yeah. That's how you that's get. Uh, that's how you get underwater glass on uh, the rims of these lavas. It's just too fast for any crystallization or anything to happen. The insulated insides get time to crystallize though. Yeah. If they haven't already started uh, previously. Robert yeah, and his so coffee can. so when you brought the lava sample <laughs> up in your coffee can, was the center like still really molten? Was it what? Like, in the sample that you brought up, like the center part of it, would yeah. it have been still really hot? Oh, no, I don't think so. No. Yeah, it would have been small enough that it would have yeah. uh, been yeah, probably wasn't. cold by the time it got back on board, yeah. like freezing oh, okay. cold. Okay. It didn't like fill the coffee can up, you know? Just like globs. Okay. I'm just fascinated. This is cool. <laughs> the internet is also fascinated. They're demanding that they want to hear more about Robert's lava collection. Well, I think that's it's on the internet. Go on the uh, internet, yeah. internet. Go have a look at yourself. Yeah. Um, look up uh, the Lau Basin, L-A-U Basin, and uh, pair that with the search term uh, eruption, and you should find... Uh, Video? You should find a YouTube video yeah. per, like right away. Throw in Aquaman with, in that search just for with, fun. With hydrophones, so you can actually hear the volcano erupting. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> what did, it, what wow. did it sound like, Robert? Make the, can you do, can <laughs> you do the sound? It was a deep rumble. Oh, this one's like good. A, like more like a Yeah, like yeah exactly. Whoa, hey, I'm a good <laughs> volcano. Right. Yeah, you are. Starfish, <laughs> volcanoes, <laughs> Brazilian... Bossa Nova musicians, whatever you want. Yeah, some mm, booms. Voila. Best you know, way to start the day. Like some deep booms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And That's like rocks crazy. cracking. Yeah, rock noises, you know? Yeah. <laughs> rock noises. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, rock noises. Bell nose. Bell nose. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like I Van know. Halen? Like, <laughs> that too. <laughs> little ACDC. Little ACDC. Yeah. Yeah. I guess oh. a bass drum, right? <laughs> For the with those aritagorgias. Okay, oh. sorry. I was going to go on a tangent, so yes. <laughs> oh, you're good. No, it's welcome. <laughs> For that rock puppet video I made, it was set to the song, Now It's Time to Rock by ACDC. <laughs> I nice. love it. <laughs> I ooh, would imagine ooh, that ooh, ooh, yellow yeah. sponge. Yeah, yeah, so we've got some metallogorgias, some uh, corallids, as well as this uh, these aritagorgias that we've been seeing, but we also have a yellow sponge, which is always lovely. Yeah. Of course, you had the, the preview on that with the still cam angles. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I'm I going, did. ooh, ooh, and Virginia's just like, oh, yeah, I got this. Yeah, <laughs> I'm already taking a still cam <laughs> picture. Well, so a lot of the time, the, um, we have this uh, really wonderful camera that allows us to take really beautiful still images. And um, uh, I've been, I've been uh, able to use it to get some images on a lot of these that we've been seeing today. The sponge, the yellow sponge looks a little bit different than the yellow sponges we've been seeing. I think it's more heavily colonized. I mean, look, it's even got uh, sea stars wrapped around yeah. its st uh, stalk. Yeah, but the, I mean, the other ones were like clearly Bolosoma with the like, um, I mean, Bolosoma sort of has like this internal. Yeah, that sort of cheese-like structure. Yeah, that. 
I think it's there. We're just kind of looking at it profile. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's just that it looks like it's got a bite taken out of it. That is kind of weird. To say. Me. It looks like something I mean, when you look like cheese, occasionally you're going to get eaten, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, this cheese is yeah, made of glass. Yeah, that does have a scoop in it. Um, spines. So crunchy. Wow. Not not just... my favorite type of cheese, but <laughs> cheese on apple pie. <laughs> this one has a lot of sea stars on it. I think more than I've seen for uh, many of these. They, and they usually have multiple, but man, they're like all over this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is Can that be the reason why it's like deteriorating? Dish? No Maybe. idea, you know. <laughs> um, I haven't heard of two stars eating sponges, but that does not mean that that is, you know, not something that happens. Yeah, that's just one of those things that we don't know for sure. Just absence of information. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could just be that something ran into it and broke it off. Yes, no. Could be. Mm -hmm. You're pretty quiet to me, Zach. It's the, but I gotta yeah. put that like yes. next to my mouth then. Yeah. Jeez. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Alright, I can turn you up over here a bit too. Ooh. Ooh. I can feel this rattling. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are rattling. Ooh, it's uh, it's yeah, sort of like coming in there. to the rock to the ACDC concert. Yeah, yeah that was a little harmonic. Amber's, there. Amber's got was, got me about to sing nuts. TNT. The DP. <laughs> I'm TNT. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Daniel yeah. just came up to ask how it had been performing, and I said, "Okay, until now." <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's yeah. your fault. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's not that's killing. That sounds really Never. bad. Yeah, this is uh, vibrating in ways I don't like. No. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah. Sounds like something that's, that's trying to get is. back in. <laughs> 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 it's very euphemistic of you. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, I'll, I'll wait for the bridge to say something. They haven't said anything. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, they might be a little occupied. They're probably dealing with it right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Rocking mm. and a rolling. Wow. You can see the movement up down here. I know. That's what I was looking at, too. Oh, my God, damn. I'm sort of surprised they're letting it go on. Yeah. Long. Oh, the winch. Yeah. That's, that's kind of scary for that. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, Where's the nearest point of land? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we, saw it, we saw it yesterday. We're not far. It's swimmable. It's swimmable. We're not far. Didn't we move like 12 hours away from it? <laughs> yeah, we did. We're, we're staying in line with the, with the main Hawaiian islands, though. I'm not too far away. Uh, actually, I think we're Pretty yeah. Far we, south. We, we spotted land around dinner time last night. So <laughs> the dive started at 4, so we're about 8 hours away. I think we're right. still we'll heading swim. southeast, so probably close to Pearl and Hermes. or. Yeah, we think it was Pearl and Hermes. The island we saw was Manavai. Oh, it was? Sure. Yeah, okay, it was okay. Manavai. But I, th My bad. I, I think we're uh, close what to Pearl and Hermes. What do you say? Radio? I don't know. I was turning it up. Let's see. Sorry, can we? Yeah. We need to yeah. Figure out what's going on here. Yeah. It's definitely not. Not normal. Uh. Could you give us an update on is anything what's going on with the I guess the vibrations that we're feeling? The what's that? Fire pump? What? I don't know. That's what I heard. I heard fire pump. What pump is that? <laughs> Uh, maybe they're running an emergency generator. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what's going on. Okay. Bueno, gracias. Yeah, I... They're just testing the emergency generator. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, he okay. said that he, they're running the fire pump? Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, they're doing Thank a... You. Yeah, they're doing a drill. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, is that why they were saying 111 earlier? Yeah. They oh. yeah. We, we're in our own little universe, our own little <laughs> fold of space time inside the control van, the 8 to 12 watch, bringing the deep sea to you live from uh, 
Yeah, it all makes a lot more sense now. <laughs> Almost 1,800 meters over a mile deep. So yeah. we didn't know what was going on at the surface, even though technically we are at the surface. But we're good. We're all good. Mahalo, mm -hmm. Catalina, thank you for resolving okay, that's that. that's better. <laughs> and uh, we'll just keep shaking and vibrating here. I like it. It's like uh, front row seats at the at the concert. Come yeah. on. Yeah, well, at least it wasn't uh, the DP going out. That's uh, always <laughs> yeah. a little worrisome. But it happens sometimes. Sometimes it just needs to be rebooted. Yeah. Well, the last time it did that, there wasn't that kind of vibration. So yeah. I was like, oh. right, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> what I was with Catalina on that one. I was like, oh. It just went quiet, if yeah. anything. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, this is interesting. We have more of these uh, corals, let's, uh, crinoids and things and rocks. <laughs> yes, we <laughs> rocks. Look at that. Virginia's, that. Virginia's, <laughs> Virginia's calling her nerves. <laughs> Call me their nerves. Huh? <laughs> Everything's going to be fine. There's rocks and coral and crinoids. <laughs> sponges. <laughs> Look at these that are gorgeous. They're so cool. All the sponges that we're seeing. We are okay, it. friends on the internet. Are we, we are just fine. <laughs> yeah. No, it is. It's always nicer when they tell you that they're doing a drill, but it is. Uh, <laughs> they don't always tell you. Yeah. And you know what? One of the things about um, being on a on a vessel is always paying attention to what's around you, Maka smells, Allah. sights. <laughs> you know, um, vibrations are important to know. Maka and Allah, I agree. Always, so yeah. thank you, Catalina, for um, calling and asking. Of course. Yes. You know. So yeah. <laughs> Especially vibrations. Nice vibrations event. are never good. Yeah, yeah. usually not. Good vibrations? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay, well, those are the exception. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about good vibrations. <laughs> Sing it. Oh, no. But, yeah. Man, I have like a dozen songs in my head now. This is not good, people. Oh, no. You're, oh we no. need karaoke we night. Again. We need karaoke <laughs> night, everyone. I was going to say, SPL sings, right? Oh. <laughs> Oh god, that's that would drive everybody away. I'm pretty sure everyone is awake. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Ooh. I know it's a, it's a I think it's a beautiful such a beautiful coral. I love Atalanta's view, kind oh, of a close yeah, up that on is her. Stunning. Try to grab that. It's, uh, yeah, these are just gorgeous pillow lavas here. Yeah. Of course, what are they not? Yeah, I haven't seen any evidence for like any hyaloclastites or anything so far this dive. It's just been a lot of basalt, which I am uh, I am very pleased about. <laughs> I am pleased. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. And so that's uh, the hyaloclastites are that's a different form of sedimentation of sort of the the rock, right? Yeah, it's a volcano sedimentary deposit that probably happens close to um, a vent further down the flanks of the volcano. Very, very highly altered. Sometimes they have these giant clinopyroxenes in them that uh, uh, we can do some great stuff with, uh, but more frequently they're uh, uh, mostly just highly altered uh, pieces of lava. So they look pretty cool because of the alteration state, but um, unfortunately those are really, really hard to do science with just because uh, uh, it's about as altered as a rock can get and still stay rocky. Oh, really? Yeah, they're, they're basically like clay minerals at that point. So mm -hmm. very soft, uh, very, uh, you could probably sonicate them apart. Like if you put them into an ultrasonic bath, they'd probably just disaggregate. Ooh. Which is um, not always helpful. Interesting. You get all the cool toys. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have fun. Yeah, and Robert has to use coffee cans. <laughs> Come on. We all just use coffee cans for things too, and we store. Um, it's, it's a good place to store rocks, <laughs> as Robert knows. <laughs> Is your home decorated with rocks? Um, a little bit. Um, <laughs> I, I don't have a permanent display or anything set up because I, uh, I don't, for for a long time I uh, was not in one place for more than a couple years at a time, and uh, I. I I don't know, I still live a little bit like a grad student in that respect. So once, once I find something that seems to be a little more permanent uh, job-wise, uh, then yes, I will have more rocks on display. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, this is beautiful too over here. Can we get a zoom on this? Yeah. It's a cool yeah, it looks like it's branched, it's uh, broken off a couple times. Uh, yeah, it looks like those rocks tipped over. Yeah, look at, look at, look at oh, the trunk wow. on that one. 
curves around in some interesting ways, like you see in uh, some of those forests that have been affected by earthquakes or landslides or whatever, and all the trees have that bend at their base. Oh, interesting. Yeah, you see that on ravines too, where the like the earth has kind of moved a little bit, and so the the tree has to sort of change its forms to move upright. Mm-hmm. Like that. Yeah, pretty much what we're seeing here, because you can wow, see that bend in this one too. Zoom member. Okay. She's so thick. It's oh, yeah, very great. Dense. Yeah, that's wow. fantastic. It looks like it's nodal branching almost. We're just. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Great. Yeah, there's a, there's like node here. That's beautiful. Could you um, pan down a little bit so we can look more at the, the thicker branching too? Oh, awesome. That's perfect. Yeah, right here is great. Yeah, you can see that the... That's so interesting. Wow. They're so beautiful. It looks like some of these are branching directly from the node and some of them just above. So would that be considered like, what, what would you, like undeterminate branching? Is what it, is that it what might, it's called? It might be because, uh, yeah. Or this could be the internodal again. It just looks like it's nodal. Interesting. Yeah, that has really tight banding. It's uh, really tight. That, that yeah. main uh, that main part of its. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's, Am I still it's good? Not trunk in uh, Bob? coral language. Hey. Am I still good? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. One minute. It almost looks like in the corner there, you can see where the, it looks like the holdfast may have broken okay. off. You see a flat space and then the right. holdfast like and then it's back. re yeah. itself. Yeah, wow, that's really cool. That's some interesting imagery there. Ooh, 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 there's a wave. <laughs> Boing. All right. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. Sounds okay. good. Let's go. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, it's a that's a very bushy bamboo. Um, very very cool. So you pulled me forward. I was like, oh nope. Get out here before we destroy that thing. Ah, thank you, Chris. Um, Chris Kelly just chimed in um, as one of our scientists ashore, saying that uh, they think that this is a Jason Isis species, um, and it is actually nodal, um, uh, which is fantastic. And that the one of the identifiers is that the stalks of the polyps are filled with sclerites, making them look white, which is awesome. Great to know. Oh, yeah. They are very white. Fantastic. Let's see if I can... Virginia, we have a few uh, viewers who may be a little unfamiliar with uh, bamboo corals and are wondering, and when we're describing nodal and talking oh, about internodal yes. or nodal branching what exactly does that mean what were you looking at as we were as we were examining that bamboo coral yeah so bamboo corals are, are this uh, very large group of corals that um, have these 
portions of the portions of their skeleton that are white and portions of the skeleton that are much kind of thinner but they're they're black and so they give it this sort of banded look of, of white uh, white to black to white to black and so they have this sort of um, this common name of, uh, of bamboo corals um, and so but where where these uh, different cor where these different uh, corals branch from whether it be from the white portion or from the black portion that that's sort of what we're talking about and the node um, the node is what we're talking about when um, that's the the black portion the protonaceous portion that's the node and so if it is branching at the node then it is branching from that black portion there and if it is branching from the the white portion then we call that internodal so in between it branches from in between those nodes um, and that's a really important characteristic for determining the these um, you know what what group of coral of bamboo to put them into so it's pretty interesting um, uh, these bamboo corals however are um, what is called a uh, polyphyletic so there are multiple families um, or um, within it so it's yeah. uh, it's been going on a it's been going through a lot of uh, changes um, there there are several researchers who are looking into these uh, corals and trying to trying to narrow down the, the families um, so it's a uh, really important work and it's really interesting and it's uh, uh, pretty cool to see them these changes but I am I am not personally keeping track of uh, what what group is in which is in which species or genus or any um, that so I can't go into further detail is what I'm saying but yeah no thank you yeah. but there is that there are, there are a lot of publications well there are, there are several publications out about um, how these have been changing and how these um, families have been regrouped or or, um, or changed um, we definitely since, yeah. see some amazing a diversity of morphologies in the bamboos but that uh, that sort of nodal bamboo-like structure is always uh, such a clear identifier of that broader that broader grouping. But right, and so that's that the other thing too is when we're talking about is it nodal or internodal. That is that is another very large grouping characteristic. But then you then use many other smaller characteristics that um, sort of like the uh, like uh, what Chris Kelly was just saying about the uh, looking at the color of of the polyps themselves, if they're you know, and, and the stalk of the polyps. Um, you know, these are other key characteristics that can be used to get to genus. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's a very interesting time to be a, a deep sea coral biologist. Learning so much. There is so much that is changing. Thank you, Virginia. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Virginia, um, oh, sorry, Val. <laughs> I um, that's fine. I'll, I'll answer your question. Brains all over the place. Um, I was just going to say, so now between this waypoint and waypoint six, since it's relatively flat and kind of a, a long expanse, I was just going to track a line. Does that sound okay? Um, it's good with me. How about you? Sounds great to yeah. me. Let's yeah. do it. Sweet. Let's go. For most of our dives, we've been uh, making jumps. You might have heard Catalina kind of describe it as doing little jumps of sometimes 30 or 50 meters in distance at the surface. And then our ROV system, the, the pair of ROVs, kind of swings back to catch up with the ship. And sometimes we can also just track a line over a longer distance, moving at a slow, steady speed. And the ROVs just kind of cruise along, keeping up with the, keeping up with the ship so that they're not getting tugged on and Herc can, can do the work that Herc is great at doing, getting these close-up views that, Amber's helping us to get, so that's uh, we're moving along, and we get to get to track a line. It's fun. We're flying. There's no stopping us now. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I am curious. Is uh, can I use your Amber? Which which uh, good vibrations people prefer? The the Beach Boys or or Marky Mark? <laughs> Marky Mark. Ooh, that was oh, quick. Ooh, that was quick. Ooh, look at that. Um, it's beautiful. That fish. So, <laughs> so black. What is? Oh, it might be. Um, uh, I want to say it's a Nazumia, but that's only because of the size. It's a little guy. Oh, yeah, it's a beautiful little. Uh, 
McCurrid. Oh. Maybe yeah. maybe ten centimeters long, four maybe. inches. Quite, maybe quite small. Oh, Chris Kelly is saying Kumba species. I'm unfamiliar with that. Okay, Chris Kelly, but which good vibrations song? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't think I'm familiar with the Marky Mark version. Oh, wow. You'd like it, though. You'd like it. Some hip hop. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at the. Nose on the left. Yeah. The rock pen. Ooh, good spot. Same one as the. Same kind as the one we saw earlier. Oh, nice. Where are you going? <laughs> so tiny. Coming to hide. <laughs> hide under her. Well, great, thank you. Oh, yeah. Daniel, just a minute ago when you said there's nothing stopping us now, what immediately came into my head was the Queen song, Don't Stop yeah. Me Now. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I'm having such a great influence on this band. I love it. Oh. So many earworms. Wow, these sponges are really um, pretty beautiful morphology. Oh, those are beautiful Aritogorgia. Yeah, they're back up on one of those local highs yeah. where they like to hang out. Man, I moved away from the still cam and I missed them. That's okay. Yeah, feel free. We can take a take a minute in here because the bridge asked us to stand by. Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to catch up with Dan and Lana real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no worries. Off on the cool. side. Like this. Back in the land of many large sponges. <laughs> yeah. This dive is reminding me a little bit of some of the Lilio Kalani dives to the north. We That's are at uh, 1,800 meters, which I think is. Yeah. That was around where we were starting on those? No, that was um, mid, some of them. Mid, yeah, mid. Yeah, we had, we had specific depth ranges that we were trying to tackle um, with part of the sampling strategy there because. Uh, Bless you, whoever sneezed. Yeah, good <laughs> night. Yeah, we had a, uh, our chief scientist was uh, Dr. Beth Orcutt, and she is working on uh, uh, microbes mm. in uh, some of the really high alteration state manganese encrusted rocks. So uh, she, she had uh, uh, some specific uh, uh, parts of uh, you know, both, both in terms of depth, like water column, oxygen saturation, uh, some, some targeted uh, uh, spaces. Uh, on the flanks of these volcanoes where she was looking for um, uh, different samples place to place to uh, uh, see what those microbes were doing. And uh, so yeah, we, we uh, designed a lot of the dives uh, around that. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. We did have one deep dive on that expedition too, where we went down below uh, 3,000 meters. Mm, and, uh, that's interesting. Uh, obviously, not uh, not as much life there, but um, we got some uh, got some really neat rocks out of that area, and uh, we did actually find a. Uh, uh, I believe what's, uh, the common name is biscuit star, and uh, I think some sort of primnoid coral that uh, the biology team ashore was very interested in. So we oh, well, uh, we collected those. Um, brought them up. Yeah, yeah we sure are picking up a little bit here hey, topside. Is that just another little sponge? Uh, it's a sponge next okay. to a, a dead sponge. I think it may be a little. So. Oh, no. 
For a second, I thought it was a little bit of purple, and I was like, oh my goodness, but no, it's not. Oh, yeah, the sea avocado. Mm -hmm. That's your name for it, right? It is my name okay. for it. Yes, uh, just making sure it was not a... Yeah, that is nice. Yeah, no, there, I, I don't much. think there's any common name for it. Yeah, I think it's it's only been seen like two or three times. So. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no, uh, that's that's why the researchers were, um, I'm sure, out. were so interested in it. <laughs> Did you zoom over? I'm just imagining us like scooting Herc along, trying to the catch the suction it. sampler. <laughs> just like, oh no. <laughs> Homothelid crab. Oh, with a little anemone on it. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it has some ridges on it. It's a skeleton yeah. or a mm. whalebone or something. Hmm. Yeah. It's under a bunch of uh, sponge debris that it's really hard to tell what it is. It's a plastic water bottle. <laughs> 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 It looks like it has some manganese on it. It's under too much sediment. It's been here too yeah. long. Yeah, you know, who knows what that is. It looks like sponge. Like old, Kinda, old, yeah. old sponge. But, but it looks, yeah, it looks like it has a little manganese on it too. It's I turned know. dark. Hmm. Go figure. Something that was and still is, just in a different form. Wow, is it really 1140 already? Sure is. No, it's unreal. Oh my god! It's been a fun watch. It's just been flying by. Yeah. So apparently that is a pheromatid um, crustacean, uh, believed to be in the genus Polyopagon. No, wait. I'm talking about different things. The sponge. The sponge. <laughs> <laughs> sponge is on the brain. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was looking at one thing and I was talking about another, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're pretty good at that on this watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. For no one's talked about food yet. Wow, that's oh, yeah. a huge horse of polyopagons. Sure is. Wow. Yes. Yeah, Whoa, um, looking at Atlanta, Atlanta Cam Atlanta. if you're uh, following us online. That's unbelievable. Ooh, big overhang right here. Yep. There's an aridogorgic grotto. I know. They're so they're just hanging out there, happy. Mm -hmm. A little branching primnoid. Ooh, what is that? Ooh. We got a oh, we have one of those slime stars. Whoa. I want to figure <laughs> yeah. Kukui, is this one a unit? That is Definitely a unit and a half. <laughs> it's one heck of a unit. Mm -hmm. What units are you using? Unit. <laughs> no. Or are we still moving? We're not moving. We're not we? moving, no. Okay. Oh, and uh, Chris said that it's a hymenaster. Yeah, we're not moving. They're, they're we're waiting on bridge. Oh, we're moving. Okay. We're just not okay. yeah. moving the ship. Yeah. A unit of a hymenaster. We're still moving. It's coming into the face here. But. I think that's almost 20 centimeters wide looking oh, at the wow. lasers. So Maybe even units. more. No, it's That's getting into absolute units. unit territory. Absolute <laughs> <laughs> what would you describe as an absolute unit, Val? <laughs> 20 centimeters. Oh. Yeah, okay. actually, like I said, we did just get the definition of a unit is about ten the width of our lasers. <laughs> 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 and double that is an absolute unit. Mm. <laughs> the more you know. I think we can make a whole nother measurement scale that we can use here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure every other researcher who looks at the data would be so ex so happy if we started describing things in units. <laughs> 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 but not centimeters or meters or anything like that. Just, yeah, just this is a unit. This They're is just going to be frustrated. Like, what unit are you talking yeah. about? Unit. <laughs> <laughs> unit, obviously. The unit. The you kind. know, the unit. You know? Unit. <laughs> Oh, dang. Oh, uh, that would not go over well. That would be. <laughs> that's like the ultimate form of science trolling. 
<laughs> in Hawaii, we basically use the kind for unit. It means other things too, but it's like, you know, you know, the kind. So. Yeah. Growing up in Michigan, I learned that, uh, you know, it was just sort of this thing all of us just do where uh, we don't really that often talk about um, distances and time of units. Oh, yeah, yeah. We talk about them uh, by how long it takes to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's us in Texas, too. We only we don't talk about miles or anything like that. It's just well, like you got that. too like many a, miles. It's like, yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you travel out of Houston an hour, you're still in Houston, technically. Oh, my uh, gosh. That's a, that's a legit gosh. thing. You're, you travel from one side of Houston, it probably takes you about three hours, two hours oh to get out of Houston. Is that because of traffic, or is that actually that's, like... That's actually how it is. Like, from one side of the freeway, from the other side of Houston, you'll still be in Houston on the other side. So hey. from like uh, west side Katy, all the way to, let's say... What is it, like Beaufort or something? something. Be oh, Beaumont, no, Texas? That's all Be the way. Beaumont's, Beaumont's not Houston, though, because no, Houston, Houston's like divided in like, I don't know how many different cities. Can Jesus we get a zoom on this? Um, what's up? Oh. Right there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was one of the things I loved about crossing back into uh, West Texas from New Mexico was uh, you go by this, uh, on I-10, you uh, pass this oh. road sign that's like something like El Paso, eight miles or whatever. And then uh, uh, what's, yeah, what's right on the border there? Beaumont, Beaufort? Um, yeah, Beaumont. Be yeah. Beaumont. Yeah, 852. Jeez. Oh, boy. Wow. 852 miles? That's a drive. Something yeah, like that, across yeah. Texas, yeah. Texas is enormous. So it looks like this is a nice black coral mm -hmm. in front of us. Um, say trisopathies. I'm kidding. I, Can I, I'm sorry? Sorry? I was going to say trisopathies, but that was very premature. Um, yeah, I want to look at uh, the branching pattern yeah. um, and whether it's directly across from each other or not. Yeah. Looks like they're alternating. Yeah, this is a. This is not what I was expecting. Fantastic. It looks like it's ready to give you a hug. It does. Oh, it is. It's just opening that. its arms wide. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Is this full zoom? It is. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, the um, the polyps are very are pretty distinct, but the branching is um, it's slightly at an angle uh, that I wasn't expecting. But it could just be that I'm less familiar with this um, genus. It's interesting. Hmm, tentative ID from Chris is bathypathies, but also it's a little weird. Okay, great, because that's sort of what I was thinking too. Almost like it's been twisted like twice, mm. right? Like yeah, it was, I see that. It was one degree and then it got twisted and then it was it grew a couple branches in that direction and then it got twisted again. Feels almost so. like it has a tectonic history here. <laughs> Just like oh, was skipping a awesome. gene for a little Thank while, but that's all. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Such an accurate description. It is having a bad branch day. A bad uh, branch day. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> All right, we're on the move again. Go deal. Are we off standby? Yes. No. Awesome. Yeah. All right, we shall continue in our last 12 minutes. <laughs> yeah, nearing watch change. Amazing 12 to 4 watch. About to enjoy this seamount for the first time. And don't miss us too much when we're gone because we'll be back on at 8 p.m. tonight, Honolulu time. That's right. It's Friday. Forget your work. Forget your school. Oh, gosh, Just it's Just join Friday. us in the deep sea. Is it Friday? It, it is, is Friday. Friday. Wow. It's Friday. All day. <laughs> I was, my brain was trying to make it Thursday when I was getting up this morning, but. I stopped keeping definitely track. Definitely Friday. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really keeping track either. It's just I had an overwhelming curiosity this morning for. Who knows why? I don't know. It's really bad. But like 20 minutes ago, I was like, oh, good. It's almost time to go to bed. And I was like, no, you just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can. I could. I could go back to bed. Did. But yeah. I don't know why. I just thought it was like midnight. Almost yeah. midnight instead of almost noon. 
Yeah, there I'm probably is no gonna... time in the cube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably going to get a light lunch and then go uh, hang out in the lab for a bit. Yeah, that's good. So That's good. I have an assignment due. I have to check if I've gotten an extension or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Yes. And i got to work on a couple other things, too, so. Yeah. We can have a, a work a work party. You know how well those go on the ship? We end yeah. up doing puzzles. Yeah. <laughs> well, the puzzle got done finished last night, and usually we spend, like, a day with everyone admiring the puzzle. So <laughs> we... I don't think we'll have a new puzzle unless Rennie decides it is time. It's funny. True. That one's our second to our last wooden puzzle. I know, I but he did that mention that we have many other regular puzzles. <gasps> that one was wow. really hard, yeah. too. Like, mm -hmm. we, it actually took a couple of days to do between yeah. everybody who pitched in. Right. Those laser cut ones? Yeah. 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 Those are pretty fancy. Those are Super fancy. really fancy. Yeah. Very fancy. A small fortune in puzzles is mm -hmm. aboard this vessel, which is actually really wonderful. It's a, um, you know, puzzles is such a great mindfulness sort of uh, task. You're thinking about, you're looking at shapes and, you know, the feel of things. Um, you're not thinking about everything else around you. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also really wonderful for, like, you know, bonding with people who you don't really, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to bring up topics because you don't really know anything about anyone else except for the work that they're doing. And you don't always want to talk about work. So it's really great to just sit there and be like, oh, do you see this puzzle piece? It looks like this shape. And like, you know, kind of get to know people that way. Unless it's one of those white ones, completely white ones. Oh, oh absolutely yeah. not. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> I love it. I actually, I didn't really mean to prank my friend, but I kind of did because I Oops. got her a puzzle at the beginning of COVID. That was, um, it was a beautiful puzzle, but it was like a whole bunch of, it was just like a, cult, it was like l circles that had, or just, it was like, um, yeah, like circles that had been drawn in many different colors. So it created sort of like a color wheel rainbow type situation, but it was it was definitely a jigsaw puzzle. And so it also was a repeat of the same colors over and over oh and no. over again. Oh, <laughs> and it was just, yeah, oh my gosh. she didn't thank me for it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of fun though. I, um, you know, we sent each other puzzles a couple times, and I've been meaning to send her another one, but a good one this time. Yeah. Yeah. A good not one. not a mean one. So not repetitive and not all white. Got yes. It. No. I think Fridays are especially good for puzzling. Yeah. Come on. I mean, my one of my favorite all-time movies, Friday, is Friday. You ain't got no job. <laughs> ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. They're supposed to be coming up with a new one. Oh boy. I love all the remakes of the good old 80s and 90s classics. Well, it's not supposed to be a remake, it's supposed to be a continuation. Ah, uh, so the original cast? Yep, all original cast, that's, that's what they're hinting at. Oh, wow. wow. I think because Ice Cube was talking about it and he, uh, he kind of hinted it, I think, somewhere in an interview. Ice Cube. If you're listening, Ice, it's good to have you. Glad you're a deep sea traveler with the rest of us. Glad to hear Friday's the remix coming out made me laugh back when I was a teenager. I'm sure it'll make me laugh again. Oh, it is almost that time. Yeah. We do have friends from Texas tuning in saying, from Katy to Mont Bellevue. That might have been the, t the neighborhood you were thinking of, the city. Um, that's both I don't in, know Mont Bellevue. Both in the Houston metro area, either side on I-10, and uh, it's about 60 miles. So yeah. Houston Metro spanning at least 60 miles, if not more, uh, from west to east. Wow. Yeah, this is kind of a random ass tangent, but uh, 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 during COVID, uh, MC Hammer was starting to get into <laughs> like all sorts of science stuff. On, like, I mean, cool. would just like start retweeting scientists' work and stuff on Twitter. And next thing I know, he's following me. Oh my <laughs> God. I don't even talk about science that much You're on Twitter. Famous. Can't no, touch this. That's funny. Dr. Val. Yes, Let's I, go. I don't even talk science that much on uh, on Twitter because there's enough stuff that I'm still trying to get published that I can't actually like <laughs> say a ton. Can't and tweet about it. Yeah, it was like that, that was just awesome. It was one of those moments where you get this notification, you're like, wait, what? I love it. Sounds it like was you really need to cool. Tweet about I using a rock it. hammer. Yeah. <laughs> oh jeez. Maybe I don't remember. Oh my goodness. 
Hit them with it, Val. Yeah. Drop some lines on them. MC will take it, yeah. take it to the stage. I, I write threads about mantle plumes every now and again. <laughs> I haven't done that in a while. Like slam poetry. <laughs> we, we need some. We need some geological, geological poetry. rhymes. I don't think I'm making up, up slope here. Yeah. Um. Well, I'm just shooting across to where they put waypoint six. Yeah. I mean, I'll keep on Zach the needs to come up slow. Oh, okay. I see. I'll come up slow then. Yes, my liege. <laughs> I'm definitely going to go get lunch, but to the rest of the crew, they're begging you. The internet's begging you to stay. Don't leave 8 to 12. Don't leave us. Aww, uh, you guys can stay. I'm going to go get lunch. <laughs> Uh, we love all of you for following along, tuning in from all over the world, many different languages, so many different cultures represented in this amazing global crew of deep sea travelers on this Ala Al Moana Kaiuli expedition. This is our next to last dive, unnamed seamount, I believe number 15. And uh, we're starting to inch our way back towards the main Hawaiian Islands, back into Ao, waking from our dream of the last three weeks. We'll have a few more watches with you, but. Uh, we've def definitely enjoyed the journey. So thank you for tuning in and, and uh, sending in your questions, your comments, your jokes, your stories. It's a real privilege to have you here. We appreciate your positivity, your encouragement, your curiosity. You are wonderful parts of the team. Many of you, I'm sure, embody the great qualities of those I'm sitting next to in the control van. So. Uh, happy to have you, and uh, we'll see you. See you in eight hours. Mm -hmm. See you in eight hours. Yeah. Oh, and right on cue, the door opens. <laughs> Timed All it right. right. So next watch has entered the van. Okay, right. correction on that uh, sign. Once you cross into Texas from New Mexico, El Paso, 18. Beaumont, 852. 852 <laughs> close, miles. It's yeah. yeah. a long, flat drive across Texas on I-10. <laughs> it is. I, I've, I've done El Paso to Houston before uh, yeah. with my sister when she was heading out that way for uh, an internship. She came down from California and crashed at my place, and then uh, uh, we uh, we uh, switched off driving duty getting yeah. out there. And then I flew back to El Paso that, that, uh, that next morning. Um, I do love road trips, yeah. you know. I-10, I-40. It's yeah. at I-70 up north. It's, uh, it's a lot of great trips uh, across the continent and um, amazing, amazing uh, country mm -hmm. and uh, a lot to see. You wouldn't guess it, but trying to get from Detroit, Michigan, all the way up to uh, uh, far west uh, uh, Upper Peninsula, it's about the same kind of drive as uh, trying to go across Texas. It's Michigan's a long state as well. Yeah. It is. It just doesn't look like it because it has a right angle to yeah. it, effectively. Yeah. A lot of people don't think of Hawaii as being uh, being a state that stretches for 1,500 miles. Right. Uh, yeah. And I, technically, I don't think state waters do wrap around the northwestern Hawaiian Islands. It's federal territory, but uh, but in this national marine national sanctuary. But really, the Hawaiian Islands are 1,500 miles in length. That would go from uh, New England down to Florida. So mm -hmm. <laughs> one state. Yeah. Ma massive, uh, mostly ocean. Just how we like it. Yep. Mostly deep ocean, especially how we like it. Lots of volcanoes. Can't complain. <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to sign off. Uh, next watch is coming Tanaka. in, and we're going to get everything turned over. Because, so. oh, we've yeah. got, got the amazing next crew. Yeah, thanks for uh, joining us on this. So, See you later. Excellent, Hans. Jacob, Hans in the house, Dan in the house, Taylor Ann. You guys are going to have a good show, the 12 to 4. Keep them entertained, Internet. We love you guys. Aloha.